Data Doesn't Lie, your go-to for the science behind the art of parenting. Hi guys, welcome back. So we're talking about the placenta this week and in the next three videos I will do, well including this one I will do, here we'll just talk about the introduction, what it is, sort of describe, uh, you know, how it's formed, what it does. And then in the second video, we'll start touching on some controversies around placenta. So um, delayed cord clamping or delaying clamping, the, which is delayed clamping of the cord to allow blood to come from the baby, from the mom to the baby. You know, the science around that, the benefits, how long should we clamp for, you know? gonna try to answer all those questions and then in the third video we will talk about eating placenta yes we will touch on that as well so stick with me comments in the comment section questions in the comment sections and I will answer your questions so this one what is the placenta it is an organ like the organs we have in us it is an organ organ but it actually is an extra corporeal organ made an organ for the baby that's found outside the baby it is formed from um, the same genetic material that the baby's formed from. So the egg, the sperm meet, the fuse, form a zygote, and as it starts to divide, the placenta also comes out of those division of cells. Um, so the same genetic material that the baby and the placenta have. And then um, as it divides, it then forms, um, it, it, it organizes itself into, into a certain structure. So. If you imagine a plate, like literally a plate we eat off of, um, you have two plates. One is the chorionic plate, which would be um, the fetal or the baby's side of things. And then you have the basal plate, which is the mom's um, side of things. And this, the basal plate, is closely attached to um, the mom's womb, the endometrial lining. And then imagine that those two plates are facing each other. There is a space in between. Um, that's the intervillous space, and that's necessary because in that space is where all the exchange happens. So on the baby side of things, imagine that you had a tree coming out of those plates. In fact, 30 to 40 trees coming out into that space in between the two plates with the roots deeply rooted in the baby's side of the plate, the coronic plate. And on the mom's side, the mom has arteries and veins coming out of her plate into this space. And the arteries, and each artery, one of the trees sort of just surround it. And as the blood vessel um, ejects blood from the mom's spiral arteries, it bathes all those trees and the branches and the leaves. And that's how the babies, um, and that's the intervillous tree. That tree then absorbs all the nutrients and everything that it's supposed to, and then goes on to the baby. I mean, it's just beautiful. Can you just, like the design of it is, is, I know, <laughs> those things excite me. But anyway, so that's what the, the structure at the most basic level of the placenta is. The mom's blood vessel interacting with the baby's villous tree, bathing it, the baby absorbing all that good stuff, and then um, uh, moving on to the baby through the umbilical cord, which is then attached to the baby's side of the placenta. And um, the placenta in itself weighs about 500 grams, half a kilo. Um, it's about uh, 22 inches in its widest diameter. It's like a disc type shape and in its widest diameter is about 22 inches, which is about, um, uh, sorry, 22 centimeters, which is about nine inches. And then um, it is it is as thick as 2.5 uh, centimeters. Now, when you uh, take the placenta, it has, like I said, the, on the baby side, that's when it's a, that's where it's attached to the umbilical cord. Um, so when you take the placenta on the baby side, one plate, which is what we've described, um, can have uh, two sacs for two babies. So monochorionic, that's what it means. Mono is one, chorion is placenta in this case, monochorionic. Um, having one plate and then two babies that would be diamniotic meaning two sacs so you'll have twins that share the same placenta same plate but they can have different sacs or you will have identical twins again um, they share the same plate um, and they share the same sac so monochorionic monoamniotic so one sac um, and then if you have non-identical twins which is a dichorionic they have uh, they come from two different um, fused sperms and eggs um, and then they each have their own sac and their own plate. So those are just sort of like the basic terms and definition and structure of what the placenta is. 
Now, what does placenta do? Um, I broke it down into kind of three big things. One, um, it provides, it allows uh, nutrients to come across it, um, into it and out of it. So it can be um, actively transported across, energy pumps it across, it can just diffuse across, um, and it can be sort of engulfed into the cell and then passed on to the next cell um, into the baby side. So exchange of nutrients and metabolites for the baby to grow. It also acts as a hormone producing organ. It produces hormones which are specific and important um, like human placenta lactogen and human uh, placental growth, growth hormone. And those hormones, like I said, this is in its intricate design, it's just, it's beautiful in what it does. Those hormones actually start getting the mother's body ready to store nutrients and then at a certain point in pregnancy start releasing it actively across the placenta. So if you notice the reason why we get so hungry in the first, um, you know, towards the end of the first trimester, second trimester is our bodies are starting to produce a lot of, um, the placenta is producing that hormone which is then telling our body to, hey, let's eat, store this because our baby will need it. And then towards the end of pregnancy, it starts telling our body, well, you don't need to store it anymore, which is where insulin resistance comes in. You don't need to store it anymore. Let's release it for the baby to then get use of it, get um, to then use it and transport it across the placenta for the baby to use it. So hormone production. And then the third big thing it does is it acts as a selective membrane, really as a filter. It really filters out uh, xenobiotics and things that the mom will produce that are necessary for mom, but that the baby doesn't necessarily need to see. And a really good example of this is uh, cortisol. And imagine that mom is stressed, you know, she's going through one thing or the other. Um, the placenta says, hey, I don't want baby to see these stress hormones because if the baby sees the stress hormones, it can actually affect the way the baby grows and baby doesn't grow as well. So then it takes mom's cortisol and um, changes it into an inactive form such that the baby's not seeing anything and is sort of protected. Um, the same function that the liver would do in an adult in filter, filtering out um, um, the things we don't need and don't want that could be harmful for us, the placenta does for the baby. Um, so I think it's actually a spectacular organ and that's the nutshell of what it is. Stick in, stick with me, tune in next week. We'll talk about um, delayed clamping of the cord or cutting of the cord, um, science around that, benefits of it, how long should we do it, and then the week after that we'll talk about eating the placenta. So, yes, I made that face. <laughs> so watch the video and find out what my thoughts are and what the science says. Um, share, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.